What's up guys, welcome back to Inside Out Precision. It is my second favorite time of year, right behind bow season, and that is because all the new bows are coming out. So in today's video, we're gonna go over the technical specs and run the new PSE Evo NXT 31 through the chronograph. Uh, we just got these in the shop like two days ago and I've been dying to get one set up and see what it can do. So stick tight, we're gonna bring you lots of cool information and uh, hopefully give you a little bit of info on whether or not this is the bow for you. Oh yeah. All right, so as I said, uh, this is the, the PSE Evo NXT 31. And to go over some, some technical specs first, uh, as the name would suggest, it is 31 inches axle to axle. Now they do make this in a 33 and a 35, which I will be reviewing in days to come here. Um, but I'm gonna start with the 31. So this is one of their flagship hunting models for the year. Um, Looks, first impressions right out of the box is that it looks like a very comfortable bow to shoot. Um, you know, they've obviously done some, some new things here and I'll get into that here in a minute, but let's go over just the, the technical side stuff by the numbers first. So 31 inches axle to axle, this bow has a six and a half inch brace height, so a little over your average hunting bow brace height. Most of them are in that, you know, six to six and a quarter range. Uh, it IBOs at 329 feet a second, and that that was a little surprising to me. Um, most flagship hunting bows these days are gonna be in that like 335 to 345 range, so they, they actually went backwards a little bit from years past. Um, you know, again, we're talking five, eight feet a second, not a huge deal, um, but I think that might be a little off-putting to some customers when they're looking at a new bow. You know, if they've got a, let's say a Hoyt and, and this bow and they're, they're the same price, but one is going, you know, 15 feet a second faster. Um, I think that might kind of turn some guys away, but we'll see when we run it through the chronograph. Um, as far as uh, weight goes, overall mass weight, you're right at like, like 4.55 uh, pounds, I think, 4.6 pounds. Um, and this one will go from 25 to 30 and a half inches in draw length. So really wide spectrum there. Um, Speaking of draw length, it still has the Evolve cam system, just like the, the Evolve and the Evokes did the last couple of years. Really, really nice cam system. Uh, it's very tunable. Um, it's, it draws smooth, it shoots smooth, it's quiet. And what's really cool about it is, is you might have seen this in my other videos, but you can adjust the let off on this cam. I'll try and get a close up on it right here. This little arm right here, right here. Come on camera, there we go. This little arm, by moving it in or out, I can adjust the let off between 80, 85, and 90% in the high let off model of this. Uh, I have this one set at the 80%. Personally, I don't like really high let off, so I don't. I would never shoot one at 95, um, but the 85 felt really comfortable when I was running this through the chronograph. Um, so you can adjust the, the let off there. It's just a rotating module to adjust the, the draw length. There are no draw stops that you need to match to the module like you do on a Hoyt. It's just in the module, so it's really quick and easy to adjust draw length on it. Um, they do make this bow in a low let off option. So you can order it with a low let off module that will go between 65, 70, and 75%. So for those of you who like more holding weight, you don't like a real deep valley, you want a little more responsiveness in your bow, uh, they do have that lower let off option. And you will gain a little bit of speed with that. And when I say a little bit, I mean like maybe three to five feet a second. It's not a huge difference, but basically when you have lower let off like that, there's no energy wasted in the cam getting out of the valley at all. It, it transfers into the string a little faster. So you get gain a little bit of speed. Um, so really cool system on the cams. Again, that's the Evolve cam system. Uh, when it comes to tuning this bow, there's a, there's a lot of options. So you may notice it doesn't have it doesn't have a split harness yoke like a Hoyt does. Um, and so when tuning this, they have you know a few different options. One is and probably the most popular is if you look right here, there's little spacers. It looks like one spacer, but it's actually three small ones all pushed together. And kind of like a Matthews has the top hat system where I can push the cam right or left with the different size spacers. I can do the same with this. So I could put you know, take one out of the right and put it on the left or take two out of the right and put it on the left or vice versa. And that goes for top and bottom. So I can really, really fine tune my left and right tear with just that spacer system. 
Um, you know, if I'm ripping just an eighth of an inch, I can try just moving, you know, one spacer to the other side and see if that cleans it up. Uh, on top of that, they have their their uh, cable slide here, and their cable guard is a really cool system. So it's all rollers, just like um, you know, like Hoyts and Matthews and almost any other bow. You know, the cables themselves are on rollers, and then another cool system part is the the roller guard right here that's actually on the cable so if you get like some tree sap or you know dirt or something on here you're not gonna have one that's like a plastic piece that slides over this and can gum up and kind of chatter it's always gonna slide really quiet and smooth along that that cable guard so that's that's nice um, another thing is I can adjust the pitch of that um, that cable slide there so if you look right here you can see I can loosen that screw there and I can move this in or out. And again, that's gonna aid in tuning. So obviously you don't wanna get it so far inside that you're gonna get contact with your cables on your veins, um, but you can make really fine adjustments with by moving that in or out. If you're just a little bit tail right, a little bit tail left, you know, you, with most quality bows today, you should never have to move the rest out of center shot. You, they should come with different options to tune them. Um, so a lot of options for tuning on this. Uh, they still have, I love PSE's limb pocket system, it's still the wedge lock, really, really solid. There's no play in this, um, and it's just a really nice platform. Um, as far as the, the, the riser and the limbs go, they, they switched it up a little bit. So uh, in years past, they've had a little more vertical limb, and the riser was a little bit shorter. And this year, they have actually extended the length of the riser, and the limbs are they're more laid back, so they're more, more parallel and they seem to be a little bit shorter than, than the limbs on the, uh, the Evolve and the Evoke series. Now, if you're wondering what that does, basically a longer riser, longer riser with more parallel limbs allows me to maintain a shorter axle to axle while increasing my aiming platform. And by that I mean a longer riser generally will hold better on target than a shorter riser. That's why most target bows are gonna be you know, 37 to 40 inches because generally speaking, when you get a longer axle to axle bow, you get a longer riser with it. So by extending the length of the riser and bringing the limbs in, they maintain a short axle to axle while still getting a really stable aiming platform. Um, some other things they've done on the riser this year that they, you know, consumers kind of asked them to do was they have this new synthetic grip and this is removable. It's actually very reminiscent of like the Hoyt grips, um, the synthetic Hoyt grips. It's a little bit wider than maybe I would prefer. Um, but a lot of guys' complaints last year with the grips on PSEs was it was just it was just a riser. It was aluminum, you know, it was a real thin tournament style grip, which I actually really liked. But for guys that are out, you know, hunting in really cold weather, it just froze their hand off carrying their bow around. So this is gonna insulate your hand from that from that aluminum grip a little bit, uh, as well as provide just a, maybe a little more comfortable feel. Um, Again, it's removable, so if you don't like it, you can pull it right off, and it's going to feel just like the grips did last year on the Evoke series. So, you know, they listened to people's complaints, and they fixed it, which I love when companies do that. I hate when they just think they know better than everybody and just keep producing stuff that people don't want. Um, so PSE really listened to that. Um, some other cool features on this is there's multiple mounting holes for my stabilizer. So this is your standard. They've also got a lower bracket here that I can put it in. And then they also have the rear stabilizer mount right on, on the back here. So you got a bunch of different configurations you can play with. I can run my, you know, if, I, if you run a back bar or a V bar, you, know, you can run your stabilizer up here, mount your V bar on the front here and run it back. Or what most guys do is mount it on the back here and then allows them to run a little bit shorter bar, so less mass weight, um, but it starts further back. So it ends up acting like, you know, if I put a, a 10 inch bar on the front, I'd probably only need an eight inch bar on the back to, to achieve the same hold. So just a little less bulky, a little less mass weight. So you can really play around with the stabilizer configurations. Um, another cool thing that they're doing this year is they've got a lot of really cool camo options. So they still have everything they had last year, but they've added First Light Fusion. Um, I know this is probably gonna be the most popular one that we sell, especially out west here. Guys just love First Light, love this pattern. Um, and it looks really, really sharp on here. Um, you know, it's it's a really nice finish on there. Um, for where we hunt out here, it's just a really good pattern. You know, lots of good colors in it. And uh, you know, I don't see any weird like like seams or 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 ugly spots. It seems like it's been been done really, really well. 
Um, so that's cool. You know, you've got the, the Kuyu, the Cryptic, this, Mossy Oak. Uh, they got a whole slew of, of uh, camo patterns. But again, my first impression of this bow is it looks really comfortable to shoot. Now, I am left-handed and this is a right-handed bow. Um, I ran this through the chronograph last night and I actually did this whole review last night, but when I was uploading the video this morning, I realized that uh, during this portion of the video, the something got messed up on the video file and there was, there was audio, but there was no sound. And um, so I needed to reshoot it. So in, in the chronograph, I'm wearing different clothes. Don't be put off by that. Um, but I got a chance to shoot this last night and even for me shooting it right-handed, you know, I shoot enough bows right-handed working here that I can get a pretty good sense of, of how they feel and has an incredibly solid back wall, rolls into it really well, um, and it just felt solid. It, it felt to me like it would aim really well. Now again, that's a personal opinion. I don't like, I'm not gonna tell you it aims well because it might not aim well for you. That's just, that was my opinion. So anyway, um, I'm gonna roll the footage of me shooting this through the chronograph. I think you guys are actually gonna be really surprised. I know I was. And uh, I think you guys are gonna like this bow a lot. So without further ado, I'll go uh, run the footage of the chronograph and show you what this thing can do. All right, so I've got my chronograph set up here. Um, I've got an arrow, starting with the heaviest, starting at 501. Uh, the next one's gonna be four, 458, so right about 460, uh, 421 a 408 and then a 376. So anything from like a lightweight 3D arrow all the way up to a really heavy, you know, like elk hunting arrow. So this bow right out of the box is making 70 and a half pounds. This is at 30 inches um, and this is the, the 31. So this is the, the Evo NXT 31, 70 pounds, 30 inches. Um, and we'll see what this thing can do. All right, 501 grains out of the Evo NXT 31. Again, this is right-handed. I'm gonna look stupid drawing this. Don't judge me. It actually does draw really smooth even for being right-handed. 282. <laughs> that is actually way faster than I was expecting for a bow that only IBOs at 3, 329. That's crazy. So next arrow I've got here, uh, this one's coming in at 458. So this is like a really common weight hunting arrow. Uh, anything from deer to elk, you know, this is an arrow weight that, that we like to see people shoot. Um, so this is 458. Oh. 296. That, I'm like, really impressed with that. that that's faster than that's faster than my traverse at 30 inches and 70 pounds and it's supposed to IBO at like 3 338 it's actually right about as fast cuz I'm shooting a 490 grain arrow at like 284 so that 501 grain arrow was was pretty close um, all right next arrow this is 421 Really solid back wall. Like that is rock solid. 303. <laughs> That's, I'm like legitimately impressed by that. So here's 408. I, you know, PSE kind of got a bad rap for a long time because they, like that whole X Force series and like the Omen and all that, like those bows were just a pain in the butt to tune. They had no valley, really rough on the draw cycle. This bow is extremely smooth. It's kind of hard to tell on camera, but it's pretty quiet too. 311, and this one should scream. This is a gold tip Valkyrie. It's a 340 spine, but it's only 376 grades. <sighs> 324. So what's crazy is that it's shooting uh, an arrow that's that's heavier than what an IBO rated arrow is at and the IBO specs and it's only 
five feet a second slower. It's 25 grains heavier than what they rate it with. That's a 350 grain arrow is what the speed rating is at. And it's only, it's 329 ideal. That's 324 with 25 grains. So it holds pretty true to spec. I bet if I shot a 350 grain arrow out of this, I'd be right at that like 330 mark. So that is really impressive. Um, I'm now gonna back this down to 28 inches, kind of a more common draw length. And we'll do the same test with the same arrows and see what it does. All right, so I just set the um, draw length to, to 28. Um, really easy to set the draw length on these. Um, it's just a rotating module. So there's no draw stops that you have to match with it. It's just in the module. Really quick, really easy. Um, I do wanna note this, I'm shooting this at the 80% let off and it feels really, really good. Um, you might lose a couple feet per second if you went to the 90%. I'm gonna guess probably three to four feet a second. Um, but it's not, a, it's not a big difference. So, um, you know, let off is more about the holding weight, not so much speed. You get a little more speed just because there's no wasted energy getting out of the valley. It all translates into the arrow. Um, but just to clarify, that is 80%. So still same spec, 70 pounds. This is 28 inches, so much more realistic draw length. Get my chronograph back on here. It turned off on me. All right, so. Starting with 501 grain arrow. This is like an Axis 260, big old heavy thing. 28 inches, 70 pounds. Evo NXT 31. 260, so pretty significant drop off there. Um, but with an arrow that heavy at 28 inches, that's right about what I would expect, honestly, out of a bow that would even ID a little faster. Uh, next arrow, so this is 458. Again, this is a really common hunting weight. Um, this would be an arrow, you know, at 28 inches and 70 pounds, you know, I would set a guy up with this arrow for anything from deer to elk. So really common, common arrow weight here. Really, really nice back wall, really smooth draw cycle. 273, so that's, a, very good speed, very reasonable. Um, you know, nobody's gonna be upset with that. Uh, this is a 421. Two eighty two. Now we go to a four oh eight. Two eighty nine, so right about two ninety with four hundred and eight grain arrow, and then this is the light guy here. This is three seventy six, so twenty eight inches, seventy pounds, three hundred seventy six grain arrow. Three oh two. So, um, man, I I am really really impressed with this. Uh, I'm always. You know, I've always kind of been a Hoyt and a Matthews guy. I actually shot a PSE a long time ago, one of their target models. Um, I would seriously take a look at this bow, you guys. Um, it, it retails right about a thousand bucks. I think MSRP is, is $10.99. Um, so probably sell for 50 to 100 less than that in most pro shops. Um, but this thing is a shooter. Um, I can't wait to get one in left hand and actually play around with it a little bit. But I am incredibly, incredibly impressed by that. Um, you know, those speeds are right on par with bows that IBO at like 340, which tells me that this cam system is very, very efficient. Um, you know, certain companies at the short, especially at the shorter draw lengths, they really tank in speed. This bow does not. Um, for a bow that only IBOs at 329, so basically 330, you know, it's right on par with bows that IBO at like, like 338, 340, 342, um, you know, I, the RX3 comes to mind that IBO is at like 342, and this bow pretty much is right on par speed wise with everything the RX3 can do. So go check one of these out if you get a chance. Um, like I said, they just came out with this stuff. Your pro shops, if they're a dealer, they should be getting their preview order any, any day now. Um, really, really impressed with this bow. So um, one thing that's cool about this too, I should mention, we can ship PSE. There is no dealer protection on our PSEs. So it was like Matthew and Hoyt, I can't ship them out of state. I can ship these. So if you want me to tune up a bow for you, get it shooting as pretty as it can be, um, 
let me know. We can get you one of these in the mail. Like I said, they got a lot of really cool camo options and uh, it, it's not, it doesn't just shoot well for, for a PSE. I don't mean that to sound bad. This boat just flat shoots really, really well. Um, I'm, I'm honestly really, really impressed with that. So I hope that guys, or that gave you a little, a little bit of a, a preview, you know, as, as to what this boat can do. Um, I know we're one of the first shops to have this. Hopefully, you know, if you're looking for some reviews, this will give you what you want. I, you know, I try and do this just by the numbers. Uh, everybody's gonna have their own opinions, but this bow is smooth, it's quiet, and it is, it's fast. Even though it does an IBO at an incredibly fast uh, speed, it, it seems to be really, really efficient. So um, go get your hands on one of these, give it a try. Feel free to comment below if you have any more questions or if you have any experience with these and, and you like them, dislike them, let's hear it. Um, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It really, really helps us out. Uh, the more subscribers we get, the more resources we have to bring you guys more content. So um, we're working on some pretty exciting things in the next, that'll be dropping in the next month or so. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, also, uh, I just wanna mention those Amazon links are still in the description of all the videos. That refers to a lot of the hunting gear that I use. So if you wanna go on there and check some of that stuff out, uh, it doesn't cost you anything more. It's still the same price on Amazon, but we get a little kickback from them. And again, the more resources we have, the more content we can bring you guys. So thank you for watching. As usual, keep it in the middle, and we'll see you next time.